So minor league season is coming to an end, so it's time for the minor league update. First, checking in with the AAA Nashville Sounds, taking on the San Antonio Missions, and Tyler Phillips, the right-hander, making his 20th start at the AAA level. Start things off top half of the first inning. Matt Caesar, the South Jersey native, is going to ground one back to Phillips on his sinker, and he turns that into a double play. Now onto the top of the second with two out. It's going to be Ronnie Rodriguez grounding one up the middle for a base knock to keep the inning alive. And then John Birdie is going to ground one through the left side of the infield. That's back-to-back -back singles. That brings up Colin Calgo, who I swear has been a minor league outfielder since I was in, like, middle school. And he grinds over to second base, and that's the end of the inning. Braden Webb was the opposing pitcher for the San Antonio Missions, making his 15th start. And in the bottom half of the second, it's Taryn Vavra, the former Minnesota Golden Gopher, is hitting this one out of here, right field, onto the lawn, just barely misses the sign out there. So it's a 1-0 lead for Nashville, as them with two runners on in the third, Matt Adams strikes out. And Phillips gets out of that jam. So now on to the bottom of the third. It is Gosuke Kato, and he's going to hit one into the right center field gap off the bottom of the wall. And he's got some fleet feet, so he's going to get them into third base with a triple here with one out in the inning. Then it brings up Hunter Cole. Pitch gets away from the catcher. Kato tries to score, and he's going to be gunned down at the plate. He could not score, so it's a 1-0 lead still. As we move things on to the top of the fourth, but then Kato in the field. The diving play turns into an around-the-horn double play. What a stop from Kato. Now on to the top of the fifth, where Towers would ground into a 4-6-3 double play to end the inning. Still a 1-0 ball game. It's the bottom of the fifth now. Eric Jenkins, look out. He's laying down the drag bunt, and he's got speed. Beats it out for a single, then he will proceed to show off his speed some more as he gets those fleet feet into second base with a stolen base in scoring position as then Kyle Higashioka hits one up the middle and Jenkins scores extremely easily from second base. It's now a 2-0 lead. Brings up Lewis Brinson of all people. He gets a single and that's going to be back-to-back -back single. So first and second. Now with one out brings up Hunter Cole and he's going to hit a ball into right center field. That's going to land in. He's going to be able to get second base. One run scores. It's now a 3-0 lead for Nashville. Jesus Castillo would then enter for the missions. And he would proceed to give up a hard hit ground ball from Michael Ahmed, but it's going to be right at the second baseman. So that would be the second out, but a run does come in to score to make it 4-0. And then Steel Walker would strike out to end the inning. So it's a 4-0 game at the end of 5. On to the top of the 6th now. It's two runners on, nobody out, and... Tyler Phillips walks another batter in Matt Adams, so bases are juiced and nobody out. Gatewood then grounds into the infield in. That's going to be a double play home to first. So now it's second and third with two outs, and Tyler Phillips worked the magic to get out of this one. Nobody scores, and the base is loaded with nobody out situation. Score remains 4-0. Now onto the top of the eighth, Alex Vessia, who came over from the Marlins at the trade deadline, strikes out the first batter he faced and towers with the up and in fastball. Next batter up also gets the high fastball. That's two down on strikeouts. And then it would be Jace Peterson who just lines one over to right field to Lewis Brinson for out number three. Demarcus Evans came on to get the save in the ninth inning, and he would do just that as he gets a pop up to right field. Lewis Brinson makes the play up against the fence over in foul territory as the Nashville Sounds easily beat the San Antonio Missions here at home by a score of 4 to nothing. Taryn Vavra was player of the game. He had three hits on the day, including that home run in the bottom half of the second inning. There was also Hunter Cole, who had two hits. Gosuke Kato had the triple and that diving stop into it and around the horn double play. Lewis Brinson, of all people, even had two hits on the day, but Tyler Phillips was definitely impressive. He did have some control issues as he walked five batters in six innings, but he worked a lot of double plays on the day. That sinker slider old school combo he had was working as he got a lot of ground balls to get out of those jams he got himself into. And now let's take a closer look at some of how our players did at the AAA level this season. First, there was Daniel Palka, who is currently actually with the big league club for the September call-up. So the stats you're looking at are his AAA stats 
at the time of this call-up. A 903 OPS, 18 home runs, extremely good hitter. Uh, he's probably going to end up on the roster for next season, to be honest, either as a first baseman, a bench bat, or a DH. Any of those are possibilities. Nothing is set in stone at the first base position, considering how bad Guzman has been this season. We'll just have to see how things shake out in the offseason for what Palka's role will be in the 2021 uh, season. Hunter Cole finished the year with a 798 OPS, 10 home runs. He was pretty good. Nothing special, though. Uh, no one in AAA aside from Palka really tore it up, so Cole hasn't really gotten many ABs in the major leagues either. He's going to be 29 next season, and I still really don't think of him as anything other than just kind of depth on the team. I don't think he's ever going to be like our starting first baseman, or he's not going to get like the left field job next year. He's just kind of a guy who, if we need to call up somebody, he's there as an option. Then there's Eli White, who spent the year mostly in AA, but he did get 57 ABs in AAA, and he did fairly well. He's actually a guy who could be a bench piece at, at some point for us in the future. He is a prime candidate to be a late 20s rookie guy for uh, this franchise at some point. I don't know if that's going to be this season, next season, the year after that. But he is a guy who I would be looking at for to be somebody who could be on our bench, possibly in the big leagues, because that uh, his ability to play literally anywhere on the field is definitely something that uh, helps him and his ability to not just be given up on as like a late 20s guy. Then there's Gosuke Kato. I'm assuming I'm pronouncing his first name right. I'm. It could be completely wrong, but I'm assuming it's that. Um, I'll look up his name eventually. He was decent at the dish. Uh, pretty good OBP this season, 10 home runs, 15 stolen bases. Uh, we saw that he made that insane diving stop into a double play. He's definitely one of the first options to be our backup infielder for next season in the big leagues. So he's definitely got to keep our eye on. We got him from the Marlins of the trade deadline as well. Uh, Julio Pablo Martinez, another bad season at the plate. He continues to develop, though, as a B-potential guy. He could always be an option to be a fourth or fifth outfielder for us. Eric Jenkins, same deal as Julio Pablo Martinez. He's already on the 40-man, though, while Martinez is not. He uh, doesn't have as good of an arm as Martinez, but he is faster and he has better reaction time. Both are very similar players. One of them could end up being trade bait at some point next season because it's not doesn't really make sense to have two guys who are essentially the exact same and like the same age. Then we have Michael Ahmed, who we acquired from the D-backs of the trade deadline in the Arotas Vizcaino trade. Didn't really light it up in AAA, uh, but his hitting ratings are still pretty impressive. Uh, also a good enough fielder to play all, all the infield positions, so Michael Ahmed is definitely another guy to still keep our eye on. Terran Vavra spent most of the year in AA, absolutely tore it up in AA. His OPS was in the 900s, so that's why I called him up the AAA. And he hasn't been great. Only 95 ABs in AAA, though. Still a guy to keep an eye on. He's definitely moved himself into that category of AAA infielders who I would immediately look at when I need someone to call up. So Terran Vavra is definitely a guy who is one of our top minor leaguers currently. And then Steel Walker has been extremely disappointing this season. Uh, he was very good. He was among the league leaders in the Texas League in AA. All last year, he had an extremely good year, and he really played himself into our plans. And I was just figuring, hey, one more year of development, and boom, left fielder job is his. But after this season, 3, 637 OPS and 516 ABs at AAA, uh, not really too confident about giving him the left fielder job. So I'm definitely more open to signing somebody or trading for somebody or looking for a different person in the organization to be our left fielder next season. And good old Rugnet Odor. Guy can't even hit at AAA. Next year is the last year of his contract, I believe. Uh, probably going to get rid of him before the next season starts, to be honest, whether that's a DFA or a trade, whatever it may be. Rugnet Odor is probably not going to be a Texas Ranger next season. Lewis Brinson, typical hitting performance from Lewis Brinson. Uh, Austin Bosart, Bossert, however you say this guy's name, he was our backup catcher in AAA, and uh, the only reason I'm showing him is because he had just, that's literally the worst OPS I've ever seen with that many ABs. You see an OPS like that, and you're usually, oh, they had like a couple bad games, you know, like he's played three games. No, that's 116, 118 ABs with a 376 OPS. That is absurd. 
Uh, I'm not even gonna, I don't even know what to say. It's, it's that bad. And then if we take a look at the pitching side of things at the AAA level, we've got Phil Bickford, who had a pretty good year for us. None of our starters in AA really diced it up this year. Uh, we had a couple guys who had decent years. Nobody really was, like, stand out, like, this guy is really tearing it up. Hans Kraus did in AAA, but he is obviously with the big league club right now. Uh, 420, 421 ERA for Bickford, 394 FIP, 143 Ks over 149 and two-thirds innings. He's definitely a guy who will be considered for call-ups next season. Definitely not going to be one of the first five in the rotation to start the year, but he's probably like the sixth, seventh, eighth starter in the organization right now. Uh, also, Jordan Balazovic, 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 Balazovic. Whatever his name is, I'm, I'm, I'm looking up at some point before he gets up in the big leagues. Not a great year for him, but he is still one of those, like, six, seven, eight number starters in the organization. Then there's Franklin Colome, Colome, Kalame, whatever his last name is. Picked him up in the offseason as a depth guy, 25-year-old right-handed pitcher, and he actually was pretty good in AAA for us. Definitely impressed me a bit, not really sure what his future in the big leagues could be. Uh, I'm not really sure if he's one of those six, seven, eight, maybe nine, ten guys in the organization in the uh, as the starter. Could be a bullpen arm too, but we are definitely going to be keeping him around for at least another year in the minors. Josh Green was a guy who we signed as a deep potential starter who just, we picked him up to fill out the roster essentially, fill out the organization, and uh, he ended up being quite good. Bumped his potential up to a C, so... Definitely a guy worth keeping around. Tyler Phillips, we saw him in the game we showed. He's an old-school type pitcher, sinker, slider guy, rocks the stirrups. Uh, still pretty young. I don't know if he'll ever end up being a major league pitcher for us. Could be trade bait at some point if we end up being good and would like to uh, improve our team at the deadline or something. But Tyler Phillips is definitely a solid pitcher nonetheless in our minor league organization. Uh, Alex Vessia picked him up at the deadline from the Marlins. Pretty solid year in the pen for him. Will definitely be a part of our Major League bullpen at some point next season. Uh, maybe not to start the year, but he's probably, he's definitely going to be one of those guys who goes up and down depending on what's, who's performing and whatnot. But we will see how things shake out. Uh, Demarcus Evans didn't really pitch all that much in the big leagues this year, and when he did, he didn't really pitch that well. Still has the walk problem, but it did seem like he toned down the walks a bit in AAA. Didn't really have that many guys who I wanted to send down this year, so I didn't really have too many options to bring him back up to the big leagues. But still, he is a legit option for us in the bullpen. There's Joe Palumbo, who we saw him get some time in the big league rotation. Probably nothing more than a depth guy in the organization, though, but still useful to have as a lefty. And uh, these are his stats also from before he was called up for September call-ups because he is in the big leagues right now in the bullpen, actually. And then Jonathan Hernandez is also up in the big leagues for September. He had a pretty good year in AAA. He's been on the 40-man since the start of this franchise, so I figured, hey, let's give him a shot in the bullpen, uh, see how he does. And uh, that's why he's up with the September call-ups. And then there was Tyler Chatwood, who... We signed him to convert him to a reliever. We did that. He throws extremely hard, has a good breaking ball, struggled as a starter in his career. So I figured, hey, let's try to turn him into a reliever for us. And he tore his rotator cuff like three weeks into the season. So we didn't even get a chance to see what he could do. So probably not going to be back next year either. But that was the failed Tyler Chatwood experience. Now we're taking a look at the AA Frisco Rough Riders taking on the Tulsa Drillers here at Franco Park. And on the hill for the Rough Riders is Connor Pilkington, making his seventh start since being acquired from the White Sox organization at the deadline. And he'll be opposed by a left-hander in Tyler Gilbert of the Tulsa Drillers. So start things off top half of the third inning. It's Deshaun Knowles at the dish. He's going to smack one out into right field, lands in for a single. So he's on first base. Now with one out, it's Blaze out. Alexander at the dish. Knowles was going as he gets the stolen base, but it was a dropped pitch anyways. And then Ty Tyler Grislowski lines one in the right field. Knowles coming home. The relay throw is going to get the speedy Knowles at the dish as it remains scoreless. Nice relay throw there from the Drillers. We then move on to the bottom of the third where things did not go well for Pilkington, the Mississippi State alum, as he's going to give up back-to-back -back singles here from Leon and McKinstry. 
with nobody out in the inning. Next batter up is Rivera. He's going to hit a soft one down the left field line that gets into the corner. One run comes in. It's now a 1-0 lead for the Drillers. Next batter up is uh, Amaya, he's going to hit a ball into right center field. That's going to score one. Amaya's over on second base now, so it's second and third. Nobody out. 2 nothing game. Another hit up the middle for Rayleigh as that's going to drive in two. It's now a 4 nothing lead for the Drillers. Still nobody out. Now it's going to be Walker coming to the dish and hitting a ball that barely gets over the fence into the hedges over in right center field as it's a two-run shot and it's now a 6-0 lead for Tulsa. Not the start that Connor Pilkington was looking to have. They would eventually get out of the inning when Ray Pena came on to get out of the inning. And then we move things on to the top of the fourth as the Riders bats did not give up. There was Davis Wenzel, who you saw a single in the previous AB, and then it's going to be Jordan Brewer blooping one into right center. He gets over to second, Wenzel to third, and now it's second and third with two outs. It's Luis Angel Acuna, who is going to bloop one into right center. That's going to score two. It's now a 6-2 ball game. On to the top of the six, Davis Wenzel, the bearded man from Baylor absolutely cranking one over that left center field fence. A solo shot. It's now a three run lead for the Tulsa Drillers. As then Jordan Brewer came up with two outs in the same inning. Hits one down the left field line into the corner and Brewer's got some decent speed so he's able to get in there with a double. So he's in scoring position. Brings up Ronald Acuna's brother again and he's going to chop one up the middle. That's going to score Brewer. It's now a 6-4 ball game. Only a two run lead. Michael Boyle comes on out of the pen for the Drillers in the seventh. He is facing Blaze Allen Alexander, he's going to bloop one in for a base knock with one out, so he's on first base. And then Tyler, or Taylor, not Tyler, Grislowski hits one into right field. Alexander goes first to third, so runners on the corners for the Riders. With one out, brings up Bubba Thompson. He's going to uh, rip one down the right field line into the glove of the right fielder, though, but it is going to tag up Alexander to score, and it's a one-run ball game. Now onto the bottom of the eighth, Alex Lopez comes on to bridge the gap for the Riders. And first batter he's facing would be Santana goes down swinging. Chris Parmalee also going down looking. So back to back strikeouts for Alex Lopez. And then he would proceed to get out of the inning on a ground ball first base. Apostle steps on the bag. Cooper Cassad came on for the drillers in the ninth inning looking for the save. And unfortunately, the Riders came all the way back within one run, but they could not get it done in the ninth as Noel strikes out to end the inning. Hunter Fiducia the catcher came on to pinch hit for Blaze Alexander. Hits a hard ground ball, but it stopped on the sliding stop from the second baseman. And then Grislowski, who has some pop, swings through a pitch. That's a drop third strike, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Kassad as he gets out of the inning, closes the game out for the Drillers as they just hang on against the Riders comeback and win this one 6-5 here at home. Obviously not a great day for Connor Pilkington, while Jared Walker, the Drillers' third baseman, gets player of the game honors for his home run that he had to give them that 6-0 lead. Now let's take a closer look at some of the guys on the AAA ball club. First things first, there is Sammy Siani. He was signed as a guy just purely to fill out the minor leagues for us, and I doubt he becomes a legit prospect for us, but he does have... Uh, a solid year this year in double-A in the time he got, 833 OPS and 148 ABs. He's still only 20 years old, will be 21 next year, so he could develop a lot more, but he is only a C potential, so it'll it's just how much he can develop. Then there's Taylor Grislowski, who I was actually very impressed by him. He can play multiple positions as well as catcher. He was quite solid with the bat for us. 801 OPS through 343 ABs. Definitely a guy to keep an eye on as like a third, fourth catcher in the organization. Uh, it's probably him and Kiner Falefa as like swapping between the third and fourth catcher because obviously Kiner Falefa plays the infield for us also. But like if a catcher goes down, Falefa will obviously play catcher if I need him to. 
Then there's Davis Wenzel, who I had said last year is a guy who I would like to be a part of our team in the future. And he was on the bench in, in AA for a while, but then pretty much right away, once he got put as the everyday guy, I believe as a DH, he started raking. Uh, he finished the year with a 7-7-4 OPS, 11 home runs. Definitely a guy to still keep our eye on. Maximo Acosta, Acosta. A uh, de decent year in double-A for him. We will talk more about him early on next season in a prospect profile. Shirt and Apostle is a guy who struggled a bit in like the last two, three weeks, but was on fire for most of the year in double-A. His power jumped uh, against left-handed pitching up nine points. He can play all the corners, uh, has a bat that can play in the big leagues. He has a strong arm. He's still only 22 years old, B potential, already on the 40-man roster. So keep a close eye on him because he's someone who could sneak into next year's big league roster depending on what shakes out in the offseason. Then we've got Napoleon Nunez, who was one of our draft picks in 2020. He tore his Achilles pretty early on in the season, only got 110 ABs. Very raw as a hitter, but he is a solid fielder with a rocket arm, so I'm interested, I'm interested to see how he develops over the next few seasons for us. Uh, Jordan Brewer is a guy who we acquired at the trade deadline in the 2020 season in the Robinson Chirinos trade to the Astros. And Jordan Brewer was a guy who was on the Michigan College World Series team a couple years ago. Uh, hasn't hit at any level for us, though. A triple-A or double-A. He's spent time in both uh, teams. Uh, him and Steel Walker being meh to bad has caused me to be more open to signing a guy in the offseason to be a corner outfielder next year. So the job was going to be one of theirs, but they have not proven that they deserve those jobs. So these guys are probably just going to be developing the minor leagues for another season. Diospol Arias is a guy who kind of got lapped in development. He was a B potential at the start of this franchise series, but he played so poorly last year that he dropped down to a C potential, and then he played poorly again this year. So I doubt he's around for next season, because we just have so many better infielders throughout our organization that he's just kind of not really being used, just kind of blocking someone else's spot. We have Luis Angel Acuna, who is Ronald Acuna's brother. He uh, might get a prospect profile at some point, so I'm not going to talk about him too much, but this it was his first year playing in double-A. He was in single-A last season. He's still extremely young, so I'm not going to look too much into his OPS stats this season. Uh, Bubba Thompson is a guy who I'm going to look pretty deeply into his stats because he is another guy who followed up a great 2020 with a bad 2021. I thought he could develop into a solid contact OBP guy. Hopefully he can get back to being really good next season. Uh, one thing that did happen, though, is he got his power up by 11 points somehow. Not really sure. Uh, or against Power against left-handed pitching up of 11 points. Not really sure how that happened, but it did. So hopefully he can use that to be better next year. Uh, Oslavis Basabe is another very young guy who needs to develop a lot more. We'll see how he ends up on the uh, as a as a player in like two, three more seasons of development. Then there's Blaze Alexander, who the D-backs had him in single A for whatever reason before we got him. So he only got 113 a, a triple A ABs for us, but. Not really great in any of those ABs, still very young, nowhere near MLB ready anyways. It's not like we traded for him as a guy who's going to be like for sure start in the big league someday. We traded for him as a guy who could possibly be somebody, but he's obviously quite raw and needs to develop. And to wrap things up with our hitters, there was Deshaun Knowles, who was the piece we got from the Angels in the Charlie Morton trade. And he had a pretty bad year in AA, a very bad year in AA at the plate. Uh, he's still very young, still has very solid ratings. I will still be keeping a very close eye on his development because he is a guy who I would look to possibly be a major league contributor for us. And he will probably be getting a prospect profile in 2020 as well. I have a list of guys who I want to get to for prospect profiles. He's on it. Now onto the pitching side of things, there's William Burns, who is one of our 2020 draft picks. A very good year in AA. He's another guy who's on the prospect profile list. Uh, Brock Burke, very good ERA, meh FIP. Uh, he'll be 25 next year, has a dreadful walk per nine rating, which is never good. Uh, still, though, he is a left-handed pitcher, we worth keeping around in, in the organization. Uh, Ray Pena, another 2020 draft pick, pretty solid year, 2.43, or 2.4 war, would be 23 next year. See potential guy who could be a legit pitcher for us at some point. 
uh, Cole Wynn. I actually have tiers of prospect profiles, so I have, like, the first tier is, like, four or so guys who are, like, for sure getting a prospect profile. And then there's, like, another tier that's, like, these guys I would like to get them prospect profiles, but I'm not really sure if I have room to fit them in before more guys kind of become more interesting than them. He's one of that second tier. He's, like, one of the first guys in that second tier. So we'll see if he gets one. But the thing to know about Cole Wynn is he's got a legit chance of being a solid pitcher for us. We've also got Robert Duggar down in AA. He uh, actually was picked up at, in waivers this season. He was removed from the Marlins 40-man roster, so he had to go through waivers. And we claimed him because I saw he was a B potential. So he's currently on the 40-man roster. But we're going to see if we can remove him from that 40-man in the offseason and then get him to pass through waivers so he can be in our organization and then just see what he does for a full year of development as a B-potential guy. Uh, not the greatest B-potential guy, but he is worth seeing what he can do. Carlos Hernandez is a hard-throwing righty. Very solid year in double-A, split between rotation and the bullpen. Mainly the bullpen, though. The thing is, is he has time in the big league, so he's gonna want, like, a $500,000 contract. The money is not the issue. It's the fact that when you sign somebody to a contract like that, the game automatically puts them on the 40-man, and I don't really want him to be on the 40-man. So we'll see if he sticks around, but uh, if he's gonna be on the 40-man, probably not. We also had Anoli Paredes, who was a deep potential reliever who we signed just purely to fill out the double-A bullpen. We had a few of those guys, and he did a pitching really well, so he got bumped up to his C potential. No idea if he ends up being a big league reliever for us, but he is worth keeping around to fill out the organization. Uh, Connor Pilkington saw him get rocked in-game. Aside from that one start, he has been very good for us in his limited time in double-A, because for whatever reason, the White Sox had him in single-A. No idea why they would have a guy this high of an overall in single A, but Pilkington is a soft tossing lefty. Could be a solid back end of the rotation guy for us at some point. And then we've also got Mike Myers, who, no, not that Mike Myers, or that one, or that one. He's the guy who had like the worst Major League debut almost of all time or something like that. That Mike Myers. Similar deal to Robert Duggar, he was removed from his team's 40-man roster. We picked him up on the waivers. Uh, he's a decent reliever, B potential. I don't know if we bring him back in the minors next year, but he wasn't good. He was good in Double A this year, so I figured it was worth showing that he had a good season. And with that being said, that's going to wrap things up here for this edition of the Texas Rangers franchise. I've been your host, Jerseyborn, and I'm saying Jason Isbell's new album. Give it a listen.